Well, hello and welcome to the Energy Arena in Aarhus in Denmark and day two of the 2014 Men's European Handball Championships. My name is Paul Gray. Thanks for joining us today. Well, earlier today in Group C, Serbia beat Poland 2019 in a nail-biting finish. But now it's Olympic champions France who take on Russia. And their confirmation of that earlier win by Serbia, just five goals in the last 15 minutes. Very low scoring, but uh, it wasn't short on excitement as Poland nearly sneaked a draw at the end. But Serbia hung on. So the French fans are ready. France have won the last two encounters against Russia at the European Championships two years ago. And then the last time before that was the 2008 Olympic Games. In fact, you have to go all the way back to the 2004 Olympic Games for the last time that Russia beat France in a major competition. And there they are. France step out behind their captain. Fernandez only just recovered. This then the group. Only three of these four teams will go through to the main round of the competition, taking the results with them. Some familiar faces, but also a lot of new faces in the French team who are beset with injury. More about that later. But the fans, they never lose their fervor. France always well supported. And so here come the team from Russia. European champions in 1996. Their heyday was really in 2000, 2001. They were world champions in 2001, Olympic champions in 2000. They were silver medalists that same year in the European Championships. But since then, other than a bronze medal at the 2004 Olympic Games, success has eluded them. But under their new coach, Kulichov, they are trying to rebuild for the future. And it all starts here today in Denmark. So now I shall hand over to the hall announcer to introduce you to the French team. There's the coach, Claude Onesta. He's been with them since the World Championships in 2001 with his assistant, Sylvain Wey. And now Russia. Kulichov, former great player in his time, 123 caps for Russia. He was a European champion in 96 and world champion in 97. So supported by Alexander Rimanov. Referees now being introduced, Václav Horacek and Yeri Novotny from the Czech Republic. Very experienced pairing who've uh, refereed semi-finals at the last two men's world championships. So the table officials have been introduced and uh, now it's going to be time for the national anthems, starting with France.
Well, concentrated rather than passionate, I would say, France. And now the anthem of Russia. Well, the Russians uh, similarly looking uh, rather concentrated, almost tense. So now the teams will wheel round for the uh, customary handshake and the uh, tossing of the coin to decide who will throw off. An interesting match here. Let's have a look then at the teams beset with injuries, France. They are without uh, Gilles, Barachet, Soudry, all out for the championship. Right back, Bok picked up an injury in their last warm-up game. He misses the start of the competition as does legendary goalkeeper Omeyer. But the captain, Fernandez is recovered and plays today. But it does mean that five players here make a major competitive debut for France here today, including both goalkeepers, Dumoulin and Gérard. And Nicolas Karabatic, the one to look out for, as ever, the 29-year-old who plays for Barcelona. 882 goals for France in 213 internationals. Well. Russia have their own problems with the stalwarts Chipurin and Rasvod said both out with injuries while left winger Dibirov declared himself unavailable a decision that has not been well received back home. Well Pavel Atman much will be expected of the 26 year old who plays for Metalux Skopje in Macedonia 43 caps for the uh, playmaker. Nevertheless the Russia line up with one of the least experienced teams with just 37 caps on average per player. Kludonista has his own problems as uh, Didier Dinar with him on the bench as a defensive coach for the French team. And for Russia, Oleg Kulechov. Great name of handball, trying to uh, prepare a new generation, having taken over from the legendary Maximov. For well, the referees from the Czech Republic, Horacek and Novotny. Very experienced duo. Who were at the last two European championships. So, uh, France, though, have the bragging rights after winning at the last European Championships in Serbia two years ago, 28-24 in the preliminary stages. Both teams looking very different now, two years on. So here we go then, France to throw off this uh, Group C match in Aarhus, playing from left to right in the uh, lighter and darker blue strip, Russia in their traditional all-red strip. So only three teams to go through. Russia start out with a 6-0 defence against France. The uh, French wingers very, very deep. First shot is blocked. Russia come out on the break. Clatters off the uh, crossbar. France somehow managed to keep control of it. Karabatic moving up. And that goes wide. First shot by uh, Narcisse, one of the hugely experienced players. Three of them have over 200 internationals to their name. Narcisse, 246. Karabatic, 213. And then even better than that, the captain Fernandez has played 346 times for France, scoring 1,357 goals, the number two. Not on the court just now, though. Still uh, recovering from a hand injury. So for Russia, start out with uh, Gorbok at left back. Atman in the center and Igropulo at right back into the wing. Big angle, that should be it. Nicely done. Skopinsev. Karabatic looking for the line. It goes in. It won't be given both inside the area. Uh, Sorendo couldn't get away, but uh, the two Barcelona teammates connecting nicely there. Karabatic sucks in the defense, but uh, 
Sorendo, well held by uh, Pushkin. And so Gigu steps up to take the penalty. Uh, Bogdanov lifts his left leg, and the moment he does, Gigu comfortably puts the ball around the other side. So 1-1 one, one early on in this game. Looking for the uh, line player, but failed to find him completely. France break out again. Karabatic, who lines up in a major competition for the first time with his younger brother, Luka Karabatic. And he scores his first of the game. Luka Karabatic, uh, very pleased, I think, to be... Uh, with his brother. They were together at uh, Montpellier then, uh, well, uh, we won't go into the detail of uh, what ensued, but uh, the net result was that uh, Nico Karabatic uh, left uh, Montpellier, went off to Aix, and then finally this year to uh, Barcelona. As uh, Gorbok there pleads his uh, innocence against Njokas, the number 10. Took a bit of a blow, but I think accidental as the two collided. Njokas, number 10 for France playing his uh, first major competition for his uh, country. But he is an Abalo. Plays for Paris Saint-Germain, gets his first of the game. Vincent Girard beaten by Igor Pulo. Igor Pulo himself, a former Barcelona man, but now playing in Germany for Fuchs Berlin. Pulls one back, 3-2, France leading. Karabatic can't get past Igor Pulo, who hangs on to him. The Russian right back who's played 108 times for his country, scoring nearly 500 goals. Narcis, Nyokas, Nyokas again. Foul, that's a penalty. Skopinsev caught inside the area as Nyokas drives in, and an excellent start by Nyokas, the 27-year-old from Chambéry, as he goes in there, showing no nerves at all in his first major competition. Travelled uh, with France to the European Championships two years ago, but didn't play. So, Guigou once more. Same side, exactly the same scenario. Bogdanov overcommits early. And the ball goes underneath. Second penalty score then for Guigou and France take a 4-2 lead as we come up to five minutes played in this Group C match. France suddenly pushing up from a 6-0 to a 5-1 almost with uh, Luca Karabatic, the younger of the two brothers. Well closed behind and uh, inside the area by the Russian winger and France break out. Playing quick into the wing, but no space for uh, Gigou to do anything with that. And he brings it back out again quite wisely. Gigou, who plays for the uh, Montpellier team. Montpellier, who lost their long-standing title in the French League last year to Paris Saint-Germain. Bolstered by uh, Qatari money, they've brought in a lot of new stars. Oh, Karabatic again. Well, you just can't give him that kind of space inside the nine-meter line as Bogdanov looks on. Uh, rather surprised that Wise defense let him down. Atman tries to cut back inside again. Gorbok. Not enough space on the wing there for Igropoulou, who's got himself on the wrong side. Just tries to test quickly uh, Sorendo but finds him uh, ever-present. So several of the Russian players playing abroad in uh, Belarus. Bogdanov, the goalkeepers at Dynamo Minsk, but also in the Ukraine, Macedonia, Germany. And, uh, that's a penalty, the mistake by uh, Daniel Narcisse, the 34-year-old uh, left-back from Paris Saint-Germain. Igropoulou dummies and goes in, but uh, Narcis inside the area. Very powerful Igropoulou, always has these strong runs in. Kovalev. 
Well taken. Captain beats Vincent Gérard. So Kovalev, 31 years of age, the captain, 125 internationals. There's Vincent Gérard, who's only played three times for France before coming out here to these European Championships. Sharing duty today with Cyril Dumoulin because of the uh, injury to Thierry Omeya. They are hoping to have him back later in the competition and France have deliberately named only 15 players to start the competition. You're allowed 16 plus three changes, so it gives them the option to add another player and still make three changes later on if they need to. Narcisse. Oh, that goes over the top. Unwise by Alex Niokas. You need to look after him because uh, he's the only recognized right back they have in the squad. Gorbok tries to go around. He's fouled. Recognized by uh, Sorendo. And the free throw is given. Russia, who were lucky to make it through to the uh, European Championships. They were in uh, Group 7, where they finished third behind Serbia and Austria. And there was only one place open at the European Championships for a team finishing third in the uh, group stages. It was the best place third team, and they got that one. Last team in. France, for their part, won Group 3 effortlessly, winning all their matches against Norway, Lithuania and Turkey. Goalkeeper's ball. Attempt by uh, Igor Evdokimov, one of their more experienced players, coming to nothing. As, uh, Kulechov remains impassive on the bench. There is no doubt that uh, for Russia it's a huge uh, pediment to their preparation to miss uh, the line player Chipurin and uh, Alexei Rasvodsev, the left back, but more importantly, key defender Karabatic trying to find the ball into the wing, but instead uh, committing an attacking foul as he runs into the defender. Atman tries to go all the way through, a little push as he jumps to shoot, and that's a two-minute suspension for the foul on uh, Pavel Atman, a 26-year-old who plays for Metalurg Skopje in Macedonia, and uh, without argument, Alex Njokas, 27-year-old, goes off. Shove in mid-air, and uh, he didn't even have to ask for it. Kulechov knew that that was going to end up with a suspension. So, power play for Russia now, and a chance maybe to try and close this gap. Oh, and a poor pass. That slows them down as they have to come back again. And that will speed up the uh, passive play call, I suspect. Oh, off the crossbar. That was lucky. I thought it came off the uh, lower leg of uh, Narcisse. Skarbatic has the ball and wisely slows it all down. As Sorendo ambles in onto the line. And with the extra man, they're going to individually mark Narcisse, the Russians. Oleg. Skopinsev has gone out to him. Meanwhile, they're trying to push up a little bit with Igropoulou onto uh, Karabatic to isolate uh, Abalo. That's going to be a free throw for France. Sorendo smiles. Could that have been a two minute suspension the other way? Gorbok. It is. He's got himself sent off, so both teams now short-handed. And the advantage lost for the Russians, who revert back to a flat defence through necessity. Play in the centre is Pushkin. So Narcisse has moved into the right-back position, where he used to play for France when uh, they were short, even though he's right-handed, and that's why... They fear him so much, Narcisse. He's got a huge shot on him. He can also hang in the air forever. Great athlete. Scored 775 goals for France in 246 appearances. Played for a long time at Kiel alongside uh, Nicolas Karabatic. Uh, Narcisse now back at uh, Paris Saint-Germain. It's going to be a free throw for Russia. France leading 6-3 as we're past the 10-minute mark then in this Group C match in Aarhus. So Zhitnikov has come in, uh, one of the new newer players in the uh, squad, just 13 caps for the uh, number 89. Igropoulou gets his second with a trademark darting run through the defence. 
even though they were short-handed. France back at full strength. You need to keep an eye on him as he comfortably beats uh, the Dunkirk goalkeeper, Girard. So Nyokas back in the centre, it's intercepted. Nyokas is back quickly, but it's four against one. And no mistakes there, Alexander Pushkin. The Neva St. Petersburg line player. Well, France will be annoyed with themselves because they've got the power play and yet they've conceded two goals, but uh, Nikola Karabatic restores some order for France as he beats Vadim Bogdanov. Incredible athlete, Karabatic, he's been there, he's done it all, as have in fact quite a few of his teammates. Fernandez amongst them. But, uh, Karabatic, twice world champion, European champion and Olympic champion. Doubled up on everything. Little handoff. Oh, nicely done, Sergei Gorbok. The left back who plays for Reinecker Leuven in Germany. Scores, delight for Kulichov. Gorbok, with that said, is uh, unsettled in Germany. In this talk, he's going to head off to Vardar very soon. Just a one goal lead now, in it. France are at least back to full strength again. Narcisse, Nyokas. Well, tipped away. Well done by the uh, Russian defense. The ball comes out quickly. Igropulo races up. Chance maybe to catch them. Instead, oh, that uh, felt like a slap on the hand. And that's a penalty, defending inside the area, and Russia coming straight back at the French. Gorbok fouled as he went to shoot. Karabatic nearly got the ball, but Gorbok steals it back. And then uh, Narcis once more steps inside the area. So Kovalev again. Scores, and scores well. Second penalty for the captain. And it's all square, seven all here in Aarhus. Well, France, when they won the European Championship in Austria in 2010, completed an historic treble by uh, becoming simultaneously European, world and Olympic champions. Since then, though, uh, the European crown has gone to Denmark, the world crown has gone to Spain, and they are left with their Olympic title only, but they win a penalty here. France, uh, who don't see themselves as favourites anymore here in uh, the competition because of the uh, bucket load of injuries that they've sustained in uh, preparation for these games. But uh, who knows, you can never write them off. And they certainly have a crop of fantastic young players coming through, and this could be their great chance but uh, it may just be a competition too early. So once more Gigou, but this time he will face uh, the other goalkeeper, Levchin. Same result though for Gigou, who scores his third penalty. Went high against uh, Levchin, who dropped down. They swap straight back again as Bogdanov goes back in goal. 8-7 to France then. Pushkin trying to find his uh, place on the uh, line. Ball comes off the uh, crossbar, the break is on, but uh, the goalkeeper's there. Oh, he managed to drop it in before he landed. Brilliant goal. Igor Pulu claims he was inside, but uh, Vaclav Horacek will have none of it. He says Gigu managed to stay outside. Let's have a look if he's right. Picks the ball up. He did. Great decision by the referees and fantastic dexterity by Gigu. So, with 15 minutes played in the first half, France with a two-goal lead. But to Russia, still constantly hanging in there. Saved by Gérard. First save for the French keeper from eight shots. 
Karabatic. And that's a two-minute suspension. And uh, no argument for Alexander Pushkin, the 26-year-old uh, newcomer to the squad. Four internationals only. Plays for Nevas and Petersburg for that foul on uh, Karabatic, the legend that is former World Player of the Year in 2007. No change of goalkeeper this time, though. Bogdanov stays in as uh, Kulichov takes advantage of the uh, break in play for a quick chat. But uh, the clock has been stopped, and we're just waiting for the free throw to be taken. And uh, it is. And Abalu can now drift back into his wing. Both wingers staying very, very deep to try and stretch the defence and give their back players a little bit of room to manoeuvre. But Gigu now comes out. Karabatic has got in very close, Nyokas. Ah, oh, brilliant. Sorendo, oh, into the side netting. Sorendo, who for a long time was used as a defence specialist by France, but uh, especially by Barcelona. That's a good save by Bogdanov. Just got a hand to it. First proper shot of the game for Sorendo. And so Russia shorthanded, glad to have the ball back as Atman is being individually marked by Narcis and drifts off into the left wing to stay out of the way. Igropulo. Zitnikov, the 24-year-old, back to Igropulo. They're running out of time here. The uh, referee's arm will go up very soon, I'm sure. It has done. And they're forced into a shot from a relatively closed angle in the wing. The save by Gerard. Gigou comes back in. Ah, oh, brilliant. Sucked in two defenders and put the ball out to Karabatic. There's the save that started the whole thing off. Gigu goes in, takes the two defenders. Sorendo nearly got in the way, but managed to check himself in time. Four from four from Karabatic. Brilliant shooting by the uh, French marksman. 29 years of age, he's achieved so much. 882 goals, Karabatic, and 213 internationals. What a record. So the Russians back to full strength again in about 12 minutes as Igropoulou tries to play in the middle. The French playing very deep in defence, harassing the uh, Russian movement of the ball. Waiting to get him back on again, and time is up. As the uh, paper is held up by the uh, EHF observer, Lacour Larsen, and the uh, ball goes begging, though, for the Russians. A mistake by Evdokimov, and the French are out again. So it looks like we're going to have a change on the left wing with Hon Rubia warming up, the left winger looking to replace Gigou. 27 years of age, plays for Paris Saint-Germain. Narcisse, quick switch, Gigou, Nyokas. Bit of space now. Saw Bogdanov move across the goal, puts it the other way. First goal in a major competition for Nyokas. 27-year-old from Chambéry showing no signs of nerves. Team timeout called by Russia as they slightly uh, lose their footing here. 11-7 down now. They've managed to get themselves level, but uh, lots of turnovers. It is being played at a fast pace, seven so far in the game. But, uh, France, having got themselves pulled back to 7 all, have now hit the uh, Russians four goals without reply, and uh, they just can't get any kind of rhythm going anymore. Katman part pas derrière parce que dès le départ vous êtes haut tous, vous êtes tous alignés à neuf, si parallèle, faites gaffe de ne pas le prendre le cul. Hein. Allez. These are some of the actions then. And uh, well, for the moment, Claude Onesta is uh, wanting Atman more specifically marked, but his main concern is that the French are deliberately marking very high up. They're pushing up towards the nine meters to, to pressure the Russians. What he doesn't want though is Atman to manage to get in behind them, going into the wing and then coming back behind. So. Uh, 
Narcisse with clear instructions. And you can see how France are marking very high on this suspension. Ah, uh, stolen one-handed beautifully by Abalou. Incredible athlete, the 29-year-old winger from Paris Saint-Germain. Played for Atletico Madrid. Before transferring to uh, Paris Saint-Germain. Sefo Nesta, instructions well followed and has stolen the ball on the power play. Karabatic, Nyokas! And again, the focus was on Karabatic, but Nyokas came in behind. And Bogdanov frustrated. Excellent play and lovely finish. 102 kilometers an hour. Nyokas uh, being used in uh, attack only at the moment. Pushkin manages to turn inside as he's still trying to defend it very, very deep. Igropulo waiting to drive to the left, but the ball is killed initially. And they have made the substitution on the wing on that uh, timeout with Honguimbia coming in. And it's stolen again, and France doing really well on this power play with this uh, deep defense. The Russians just don't like having the French defenders right up in their face. So 20 minutes played in the first half, and France from 7 all have now steamed away to 12 7. It's uh, seven minutes now since Russia last scored. Karabatic looking to the line, but there wasn't any space to turn into it. Oh! Incredible shot. Uh, Nyokas has uh, found his range. He may be the debutant here at the major competition. Uh, I think he's saying a thank you there for the pass. He's only played 14 internationals for France, scoring 19 goals, and the change of goalkeeper Levchin is coming in now, the 39-year-old. He plays for Permsky Medvedi, team currently lying second to Tchaikovsky Medvedi in the Russian League. Tchaikovsky Medvedi, who, uh, because of financial difficulties, have seen uh, droves of their players just uh, streaming away to other clubs, including notably Chipurin, Rasvodsev and Dibirov, all going to uh, Macedonia. Well, if Dokimov finally gets one back for Russia. Kulechov, I think, relieved as much as anything else. After conceding uh, six without reply, they get themselves going again, but uh, it was an eight-minute barren spell that could prove costly. Nyokas, well, he's got a little overconfident now, and the French getting in each other's way there, and it's a free throw to Russia. Oof, off the crossbar again, and luck isn't going their way. Oh, brilliant pass! Defending inside the area by Luka Karabatic. He's uh, been swapping with Nyokas every time between attack and defence, and a sporting apology to Evdokimov. There was uh, no ill intention, it's just that uh, he came back at him to try and block him, but uh, Evdokimov had his foot right up by the line, so he could only stand inside to block him. So, a penalty. Kovaliev. Scores again, same side as the last one. Three penalties from three. And they've got themselves going again, the Russians. The Russians who had very poor preparation coming into these European Championships, played in a Four Nations tournament in Germany the beginning of January, lost all three games to Iceland, Germany and Austria. That was after an unimpressive uh, Yellow Cup uh, competition just after Christmas when they drew with Egypt, just beat uh, the host Switzerland and then lost to Belarus. Nyokas again, oof, arm taken from behind. Could have been a two-minute suspension for Pushkin. Nikola Karabatic, oh, straight through the hands of the keeper, Abalo, who loves driving around from the wing and shooting from the back. He's only 1 meter 82 tall, but he can jump so high. Karabatic won't let Igropulo go. The former teammates at Barcelona tussling away there.
France with a 70% uh, success rate on their shooting compared to Russia's 56. 70, very high. Gorobok, Atman, Gorobok again, tries a long range shot, that works! Gerard out of position. Gorobok with his second goal. Right, Nick Halluvenman, who's uh, more than likely going off to Vardar, where he will join uh, Chipuri in Rasportsev and Dibirov. Uh, more than likely uh, will be used, actually, as cover for uh, Rasportsev, who's injured and likely to be out for a little while. So the Russians themselves have switched then from the earlier 6-0 defence to a 5-1 defence. They're pushing up notably on... Uh, Narcisse, that's beautifully played. Well, there's a narrow defence as a result when you play 5-1, and uh, Karabatic goes in, sucks the defence in, and gives the ball to Onrubia. <laughs> Sorendo and uh, Nyokas having a quick word. And uh, France have got Igor Anic on now, number seven, just to the left of the picture. Defending on the right, but he's a line player. It'll be interesting to see if he's just been used in defence. He pushes up now. Oh, a bit of space. Oh, arm taken. That's going to have to be a free throw. <laughs> Karabatic says no to the referee. I don't think there's too much argument about that, that he caught his arm. There it is. Five minutes remaining. Maybe he was more saying no to the effect he was concerned. There might be a two-minute suspension. France, for their part, uh, played in the Golden League in uh, Paris and uh, the last match in Le Mans, beating uh, Qatar and Norway, although they were laboured performances, it has to be said, and losing to Denmark by a single goal. Ironically, the defeat was probably their best game of the tournament. So not perfect preparation for the French either, but with all the changes they've had to make, I guess that could be to be expected. Just under five minutes remaining. Well, France may have a... Uh, new look team with all the youngsters coming in and uh, fresh blood but uh, are they right to say that we're not uh, amongst the favorites uh, that's going to be a yellow card on rubia the foul on kovaliev ran across but there's the push just into his uh, stomach easy to spot for horacek who was standing right there and it's a penalty. So it's going to be taken by uh, Igropulo. Change the keeper, Dumoulin is in. Makes no difference. Igropulo scores his third. First one from the seven metre line. And beats the uh, Chambéry goalkeeper. He changes straight away and puts uh, Vincent Girard back in again. So four goals in it. France leading here in Aarhus. I'd have to say, looking at this group, that uh, with all the changes they've had to make, and maybe less strength in depth, that uh, Russia could be the vulnerable team in this group if uh, one isn't to make it through to the main round. Ah, brilliant again by Njokas. Four minutes to go in the first half. Ah, that's nice. Gorbok. Class act, but uh, Gerard frustrated in himself for letting it in. Got a yellow card now on the uh, Russian side for the foul on, on Rubia. Igropulo looking a bit bemused by the decision. He's saying, well, I didn't do anything wrong. He was holding my arm. But it uh, doesn't work for the uh, Fuchs Berlin right back. Playing his uh, third European Championship. Still then with his 5-1 defence. But the problem is that uh, the other back players for France are just breaking in behind that front defence. Narcisse deliberately standing a long way out to allow them to get in behind. Great setup for Karabatic by uh, Abalou. Constant talk by Kulichov to his players. It's going to be a free throw, a bit of a push on Igropoulou as he went to shoot. Everything for the moment is uh, going 
going down the middle for the Russians. Wingers staying wide to try and uh, suck the defence out. Skopinsev on the uh, left side, Kovaliev on the right. Over the top, but a push on uh, Gorobok means another free throw for Russia as Luka Karabatic sportingly helps up the player he just uh, knocked down. Luka Karabatic, four internationals for France only, compared to his brother's uh, 213, plays for X. Sorendo having a bit of a break as Anich takes up some of the defensive duties for France. You see all the resin being used by the players on that ball. I think if you uh, touch that ball just once, you won't be reading a newspaper for the next hour or so. It's going to be a free throw for uh, Gorbok. Igor Pulo tries to go outside, defending inside the area, they close the door too late, France. And Igor Pulo causing all kinds of problems as Narcis just couldn't get there quickly enough. He goes wide, Narcis though stepped around the back of the uh, line player into the area to get to Igor Pulo, and that's why the penalty has been given. We're into the last two minutes. Again, Igropoulos scores his fourth goal. He's past the 500 mark now for his goals for Russia. Former Barcelona and Tchaikovsky player. Well, Russia still within range. France have certainly had the better of this first half and played some very uh, smooth, entertaining handball. Nicely done. Scored by Igor Anic, his first goal for France in a major competition. And he played nine internationals for France, Anic. Played for a long time for Kiel in Germany, and even at that time I wondered why he wasn't getting into the national team. Bertrand Gilles was there, of course, but maybe as a second-line player, but never got called up. But uh, now his chance has come for the 26-year-old who plays for Rennes. Oh, brilliant play. Finished off by Pushkin. But it was a lovely feed into him. Quick throw off taken, 30 seconds remaining in the first half. France slow it down, they don't need to hurry now, try and get a, a late shot so Russia can't get back at them. Team timeout called by Nas uh, Onesta. As uh, Anich goes down, and it's going to be a one-minute break. So for France, with this uh, new-look team, with uh, five Should players ma the making their debut in a major competition, and their captain, Jérôme Fernandez, not called into play at all so far. He's uh, carrying a, an injury to his shooting hand, which he picked up in October while he was uh, playing out in Qatar on uh, a loan from Toulouse. And the veteran uh, French captain has won three world titles, two Olympic titles and two European titles, sitting on the bench today and happy to let the others get on with the game. Others uh, not being turned yet, we may see them in the second half, the likes of Acambre, experienced uh, back player, or maybe even also Grévy, an exciting new 22-year-old left back from Montpellier, who promises greatly, I have to say. And, uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing an action here, but uh, not just yet. So, last few seconds of the first half, France on the attack. Leading by four. Crowd getting into the spirit of things here in Aarhus. Narcisse, ten seconds to go. Njokas, Karabatic. And that's a two-minute suspension. Gorbok catching uh, Karabatic on the way around. Is it, it's Atman, I beg your pardon. So the uh, Russian playmaker is off. Let's see again, he comes up number 11 there, slaps him across, but he caught him around the neck, and I'm afraid anything around neck height sees you sent off. So four seconds remaining. Maybe more importantly, though, France will start the second half with a power play for the first minute and 56 seconds. Here it is from another angle. A nasty blow for Karabatic. 
Well, it's going to need a quick shot here. So maybe uh, Karabatic to get the ball to Narcisse. Narcisse is certainly the one who's probably got the uh, missile shot that you'd want in a situation like this. But in fact, uh, he's going to stand and pass the ball. Njokas, being the left-hander, might have a better chance from this angle. Here we go. Oh, he scored! Last shot of the game. Fifth goal for Njokas in the first half. And the uh, new boy has done good. Oh, Levchin should have got to it. He tried to reach with both hands when he should have just put one across. So the half-time buzzer goes, and France lead 19-14 here in Aarhus. Well, a good performance by France. Russia started badly. The French pulled away, but then they got back to 7-all. But I'm afraid after that, it uh, proved very hard indeed. They conceded six goals without reply in an eight-minute spell. And after that, France always in control here in Aarhus in the first half of their opening Group C match. And the fans have been treated to some uh, excellent handball here. The stats then, France stunning 70% success rate on their attack, 73% on their shooting, while Russia on 54% on the attacks, 56 on the shooting. One fast break apiece, eight penalty uh, minutes. That's four suspensions for Russia there in the first half as they've been well tested by the French. Garabatic top scoring in the game with five for France, while Igor Pulu, the best of the Russians, with four goals. Njokas, well, in fact, he's credited with four only. I thought I had him on five, and Gigou as well. And there's the progression. See France make a good start. The Russians then catch up, and then that costly six-minute spell, or eight-minute spell, rather, when they conceded six. For France, it's all going down the middle at the moment. One fast break, three penalties. The wingers haven't seen too much action yet, otherwise reasonably well on the other positions. For the Russians, I'm afraid, the wings seeing absolutely nothing. It's all going down the middle. Igor Pulu really forcing things. Five penalties and one fast break. So at the interval here in Aarhus, France lead Russia 19-14. We'll take a short break. But join us again for the second half in just a few moments. We shall see you then.
So welcome back to the Energy Arena in Aarhus, in Denmark, and the uh, first matches in Group C at the Men's uh, European Handball Championships 2014. And at halftime here in this second match of the day, France are leading 19-14 against Russia. Both teams severely affected by uh, injuries have uh, had to uh, bring fairly new look sides here but France looking uh, very much more the settled side Russia relying uh, very much on their hard-working trio at the back Gorbok, Atman and Igropulo who haven't had much of a break for France Njokas who's making his uh, debut a major competition for France just 14 internationals to his name so far in uh, friendlies and uh, qualifiers. He's scored four goals and looking very confident. But uh, the top scorer is Nikola Karabatic. Who else, it seems? <laughs> the 29-year-old has scored five. Well, it looks like maybe William Acambre will come on, the number 18 there at left back. Montpellier player. Scored France's winning goal in the quarter-final against Spain at the London Olympics, which uh, saw them go on when they'd made a miserable start to the game. Scored in the last second, France going on to win Olympic gold in London. It's the only title they retain at this time. And there is uh, Atman, who for all his hard work hasn't scored in the game yet from his two shots, but uh, nevertheless has set up Gorbok and Igropulo very nicely chat between the two experienced wingers there certainly not been uh, a match uh, for the goalkeepers here Gérard for France saving two from 15 a 13 percent save rate Bogdanov also two from 19 for an 11 percent save rate so it's uh, fair to say that it's more about the shooting France uh, in the 70 percent uh, success rate there <laughs> Russia in the 60 percent but the damage all done in an eight-minute spell when France scored six goals without reply to move from 7-all to 13-7 ahead. And uh, Kovalev there, the captain and his uh, teammates, just haven't been able to do very much about it since. The play mostly driving down the centre. There is uh, Igropulo. Four goals for Russia, top scoring for them. So four groups in the uh, competition, four groups of four, with three teams going through to the main round. Then uh, groups A and B will merge into one group of six, and groups C and D will merge into another group of six, where they will continue in this arena here in Aarhus. So we're just about ready to get the second half underway. France looking to make a winning start to their Euro 2014 campaign. Uh, earlier today, Serbia beat Poland 2019 in a very low scoring affair. A lot of technical mistakes, although it did become exciting right at the end when Poland could have sneaked a draw. So here we go then with the second half of this uh, Group C match. Russia in the all red strip throw off. But remember, they are short handed with the uh, two minute suspension for Atman right at the end of the first half. France once more revert to this very deep defense, almost on the nine meter line. Oh, straight to the legs of uh, Cyril Dumoulin, who starts the second half instead of Gérard. Zitnikov, the scorer, is first of the game for the 24 year old from Tchaikovsky Medvedi, the Russian champions. So for France. They seem to start the uh, second half with the same lineup that started the first. Gigou uh, moved off his uh, post, Bogdanov, and just uh, left far too much space for a player of the experience of Gigou. Inside post, underneath the leg. Gigou, who scored 623 goals for France in 178 appearances. So uh, the captain Kovalev comes in on the line instead. He just hasn't got the weight there to hold his own there and eventually goes wide again. That's going to be a free throw. The foul on Sergei Shelmenko, 30-year-old who plays for Dynamo Minsk. Shelmenko getting his uh, 
first play time here at the European Championships, the number 25. Another former Tchaikovsky player who uh, left the club after their financial woes this summer. 17 caps, 39 goals for the number uh, 25 for Russia. Long range shot, that came off a French player, Dumoulin manages to get to it to make sure it's a goalkeeper throw. And France come out, but the uh, two-minute suspension served out by Russia. They've conceded just one goal in that power play for France. It's uh, not a bad result for them. Six-nil defence by the Russians. Push up a little bit on the far side. Jitnikov in defence, covering Nyokas. Looking for the line, Sorendo. And it's an attacking foul as he uh, shoulder barges. Russian defender. That's an attacking foul the other way as Karabatic is sent flying. Kulechov, who replaced the long standing Vladimir Maximov as head of the Russian team. It's a big act to follow, but Russia have really changed their style completely. They've gone from uh, being very regimented and being very disciplined. I mean, set plays they had to stick to, to now playing a nice, fast-running handball, and that's what Kulichov wants. And they're working towards that. And I have to say, it's a breath of fresh air. Sorendo, lovely pass into him by Karabatic. Sorendo finally gets on the scoreboard, but a quick throw off by Russia. Gives him a good chance to score, but a fantastic save by Dumoulin. Karabatic. Slammed away by Nyokas, who is now on five goals, and the bench on their feet. There's the save by uh, Dumoulin that started the move. Karabatic took the ball all the way up on his own, drove in between the defenders, and Nyokas cut back inside. So for the moment, they're pushing up on uh, the left back, France. Oh, lovely back pass, but uh, just uh, too narrow on the angle. Kovaliev left on the six meter line, has to just pass it back out again. Another attacking foul. Second one by Shelmenko running into Karabatic. It's all about getting the positioning right and getting there first. So 3-1 exchange early on here in the second half of this Group C match. Playing really wide, the back players literally on the sidelines. Here comes Nyokas. Nice flowing play. And again, Karabatic given space to come round. Pushkin stood back. And Karabatic helps himself. Six from six. French left back hasn't missed a single shot yet. And still on the far side, Gorbok is being marked like a shadow. Shalmenko on a, a trip. And I think he caught uh, Luka Karabatic's foot as he came through. Uh, team timeout for Russia. They certainly don't want any more injuries, so it'll give time to get treatment, but also maybe just try and correct things as they are now eight goals behind. He seems all right, though, Zhitnikov. He's up. Gives me time to tell you then. So, as I said earlier, four groups of four playing here. Yesterday, groups A and B got underway in Group A. Austria pulled off a big surprise, beating the more experienced Czech Republic 30-20 in Herning. And uh, Denmark won their first home game in front of an enthusiastic crowd. 29-21 against Macedonia. And uh, so uh, it's Austria and Denmark top of Group A in Herning, where the competition will uh, come to a conclusion in two weeks' time with the final. And then in uh, Olbo in Group B, Iceland beat uh, fellow Scandinavians Norway 31-26, while Spain beat Hungary 34-27. And then in addition to this group, then, the two groups that will merge are this one here, and we've talked enough about this one, and then Group D in Copenhagen. Incidentally, with the glasses there on the left, Didier Dinard, legendary French defender. 
There he is, working as a defence uh, coach for the team. 371 caps for France, three times world champion, twice European and twice Olympic champion. But uh, Group uh, D then in Copenhagen sees uh, Croatia, Sweden, Belarus and Montenegro. And they are playing at the moment. Shelmenko tries to cut back inside and get the shot in, just can't. Well covered all the time. And again, Shelmenko covered. Oh, mistake by the keeper, Dumoulin. He'll be annoyed with himself. Ah, he is. I'm not too surprised. Because Atman shot across his body. Couldn't get a lot of strength on that one. And, uh, that's his first goal of the game for Atman. So still they sit back and wait. The French patient build up. They got a nice running play on their attack, the French, but uh, they got so much firepower at the back. And there's proof. Nyokas. He's certainly impressing the uh, Chambéry right back. What a find he is. Certainly helps because uh, France lost uh, at the last minute Valentin Porte, who was going to be the other option at right back. He's uh, got an injury, but they do still nevertheless uh, hope that uh, he will be fit to play later in the competition. He too, though, is a relative newcomer to the French team. But uh, Onesta seems fairly chilled at the moment. Still, uh, Gorbok being individually marked. That was uh, intended for Evdokimov, but the line player never moved onto the ball. And France come away with uh, another attack as uh, Narcisse now takes over the left back position. And uh, they have uh, clearly switched deliberately, not just for one play. Karabatic looking for the line player, and this time he was. Uh, too closely marked. Lovely long pass. Kovaliev, his first open play goal. To add to three penalties. Kahabatic tries to reach up and take it, but nicely done by the captain, the 31-year-old who plays for the champions, Shekovsky Medvedi. It's the most experienced player with 125 internationals and 307 goals. Still, though, they push up. Skopinsev, the player at the front of this 5-1 defence. And the French a little bit unsettled. Oh, brilliant save. Well, he hasn't made too many. But that was a good one by Bogdanov. And again, couldn't finish it off for Sorendo. Well, his save results in a goal at the other end. Better spell. Igor Evdokimov, the scorer. Evdokimov, he played for a while for uh, Ciudad Real. Became Atletico Madrid later on. And uh, Dumoulin, well, I touched it. You don't need uh, any credit for touching it, I'm afraid. You've got to keep it out. Still a six-goal lead, though, for France here in Aarhus. Gigu comes around. And... Uh, the Russian defence working better now to unsettle the French, make it less easy for that movement of ball at the back. But uh, Nyokas, well, seven goals from ten shots. He's going to break the speed gun if he carries on like that with the kind of shooting he's putting in into the wing. That was nice. That's a good save there by Dumoulin. Third save for him. Dumoulin and Gérard both uh, playing their first major competition. Of course, the first choice would have been Thierry Omeyer, but he's got an elbow injury. And uh, the coach, uh, Onesta, said, well, I'm not going to name either one the uh, first choice keeper here. They'll just basically share duties, and uh, hopefully Omeyer will be back in due course. So Karabatic 
being given a bit of a break, as you saw. And for France, Mathieu Grebi comes on, number 15. Well, I mentioned earlier, is an exciting new prospect for France. Looking for the wing, but that came off the foot. Is that deliberate? Oh, they say it's deliberate. Uh, Joly. Not too sure about the call. Did he put his foot out or did it uh, hit accidentally? Well, he did. Well, he'll say, well, I was moving, I landed. Either way, it's a free throw for the other team, but it's more whether the intent was there. So Nyokas moves in to defend on the wing and it's a power play for the Russians. Only their second of the game and maybe a chance here to try and pull a few goals back as we go past the 10th minute in the second half. Igropulo into the wing. Now there's a lot of space. Nicely put away. Skopinsev, 29-year-old from uh, Moto Zaporozhnye in the Ukraine. Waits for Dumoulin to commit himself and puts the ball in underneath. So number 15, one to look out for. 22 years of age, the Montpellier left back, just nine internationals and 15 goals so far. Gets a little baptism there and a welcome from the Russian defense as he comes in. As uh, Shishkarev wrestles him to the ground. And in fact, it's if Dokimov had caught him. So Dumoulin comes over. 21 caps, Dumoulin, whereas Gérard, who started the game for France, just three. French fans, well, quite a few of them have made the journey here to Denmark. Hoping for the uh, glory days back again. Well, he gets his first uh, goal of a major competition. I think he's happy. Mathieu Grebi managed to get in far too close. The defence shouldn't have allowed him anywhere near there. Shelmenko tried to hold him off to no effect. And despite being short-handed, France maintain the seven-goal lead. Atman, Igropulo. Oh, stolen, brilliantly stolen. And it's a race for the ball now. And the race is won by Gigou. And I don't think that uh, Levchin, who's just replaced Bogdanov in goal, is too impressed with his team for leaving him exposed like that. Oh, that's more like it. Oh, and Dumoulin pulls off a great save. The captain on his feet there, Jérôme Fernandez, applauding his goalkeeper. Caught it with his left hand. 1 meter 99, he's got a good reach, Dumoulin. Four saves, 40% rate. Now France are back to full strength again. And again, Jokas is unstoppable. For a player with just 14 internationals under his belt and playing at his first major competition, he's showing absolutely no sign of nerves whatsoever, Jokas. He's now top scoring in the team. Eight from 11 shots, a 73% success rate. Into the line comes back Alexander Pushkin. 26-year-old newcomer to the team, just four internationals. Plays for Nevas and Petersburg. That's a penalty, defending inside the area. Again, Shalmenko, the 30-year-old back player. So Kuleshov tries to decide who should take it. Well, no change, it's Kovalev. And he beats Dumoulin, his fourth penalty. Uh, Dumoulin went the right way, he just didn't get there quick enough. France 28, Russia 20. France constantly trying to exploit the space behind the front defender. Kudinov has taken over the front now. 
complete newcomer to the Russian team, 22 years of age, the uh, number 18. Plays for Astrakhan. Russia on the break now. And France covering quickly, but uh, they've got players uh, free behind them. They've got to be careful as uh, Pushkin goes uh, loitering behind. France leave two defenders up front. Eventually, they flatten it again and go back to their 5-0-1 defence. Oh! Well, Dumoulin saves their blushes. The defence just opened up in the middle. He could have taken a truck through there. And again, getting themselves completely out of position, the French, with this 5-0-1 defence. And the captain, Kovaliev, scores his sixth goal. Top scoring for the Russians now. Big angle. French defence showing uh, frailties there. Now still Onesta looks uh, unconcerned as we reach the midway point in the second half. Oh, unlucky. Levchin got a foot to it but just couldn't keep it out and uh, Mathieu Greby all 1 meter 98 of him scores his second goal. That's going to be a free throw. Igrupulo fouled as he went to shoot. Luka Karabatic, 25 year old, who's still at X. He played there for a while with his uh, older brother before uh, Nicolas went off to uh, Barcelona. He's uh, not been used in attack, but he's quite a useful uh, line player when you put him there. Good defence here. They're forcing the Russians back, and it's a uh, passive play being called against them now. Looking for the line, and it's stolen. And uh, away go the French. Brilliant play, and it's Gnokas again. Karabatic and Dinar approve. Away so quickly, he's uh, really got more the uh, demeanor of a winger, Njokas, with his speed. Brilliant play, nine goals for him, 107 kilometers an hour. Well, there's one back at least for the Russians. Zhitnikov, 24 year old from Tchaikovsky Medvedi. One of uh, 10 players remaining from the Russian team that. Uh, Finished seventh at the World Championships last year after Kulichov had taken over. And so a round of applause as France uh, put in their captain, Jérôme Fernandez. Not because there are any trouble, but probably just to test him out and see if his, uh, if his injured right hand is OK. He's been out since October. And meanwhile, Karabatic resumes his show with his seventh goal. Is it? Oh, I beg your pardon, Grebi. Let's not take anything away from the uh, new player. So used to seeing Karabatic there. So this 5-1 uh, defence, a little bit better organised now than the last attack they did well by the Russians. And uh, I may have spooked them on this one. Immediately the gap opened up, but luckily Dumoulin pulls off another great save. Fifth save of the game for him. That's gone out of play. France look for the uh, opportunity. One-handed catch. Brilliant play. Gigou. Seven from seven. Look at the pass here. Jolie, winger to winger. Thank you very much. Had a quick check to his left to see if someone was better placed. They weren't, and he went through. Team timeout call by Oleg Kulichov. Saying, well, look up at the score. Well, yeah, you're 10 goals behind now. And, uh, the French now started turning the bench a little while back already, are still maintaining the momentum. Well, it's, uh, the uh, 2004 Olympic Games since uh, Russia last beat France in a uh, major competition. They have won a couple of friendlies since then, though. The most recent uh, Russian win in any competition was a friendly in July 2008, 27-22, coming two days after France had beaten them by one goal. Well, 
and Jukas. Well, what a start for him at the major competition. Nine goals and a 75% success rate. A lot of his shots are going in over the 100 kilometer an hour mark. He is an exceptional find for the French and uh, a timely one as well, given all the injuries they're having at right back with Xavier Barachet, their first choice right back, being injured. Then Valentin Porte, who was the obvious uh, alternative for him, although still himself a relative newcomer, then getting injured last week. And Senyokas being given a big chance here, and boy, has he taken his chance well. It's a 10 goal lead for France. Pushkin comes out, drops back in again. The big 1 meter 97, 107 kilo line player. But Dumoulin gets his hand to that one. His sixth save of the game is on a 44% save rate. Compare that to the Russian goalkeepers, Bogdanov on a 14% save rate and Levchin 11. It's been a miserable day, I have to say, for the uh, Russian goalkeepers, neither one of them being able to get into the game. And France at the moment on a 78% success rate with their shooting. Grebi. And Fernandez. Takes a bit of a knock in his uh, rib cage, winded probably more than anything else. Fernandez, number two, a remarkable player, 35 years of age, the French captain who plays for Toulouse, who scored 1,357 goals in 346 internationals. Came off the foot of Narcisse, Russia now on the attack. Igor Pulo. An attacking foul again. Good defending by France to get in quick behind Pushkin, mark their spot and wait for the uh, line play to make the mistake. And uh, Kulechov frustrated, he should have tried and turned to go around the outside, instead he tried to uh, blast his way through them. 13 turnovers Russia have suffered in the game. 10 minutes remaining. French fans getting into some voice here. Igropulo, oh, beautiful dummy. And uh, nicely finished with a spin off his fingertips to put it over the shoulder of the French keeper. Little broken wrist shot. Dummies it there, goes around. He didn't have a lot of space to do it either. Look at his hand, runs it back and runs it off his... Uh, Three last fingers. Oh, it's a, an attacking foul by Anich on the line. Nigropoulou, saved by Dumoulin. Looks up, there's no one racing up, so he decides to put the ball out nice and easily. And uh, it's a good start by Dumoulin, his first uh, major competition with uh, his eighth save of the game. Well, I have to say there's uh, little doubt in my mind that Njoka surely has uh, marked out the uh, man of the match trophy for himself. Trying a long-range shot there, Samuel Onrubia. Maybe a little bit uh, over-ambitious. Onrubia, who missed the World Championships last year with a thigh injury. And, uh, back to full strength again. So France have uh, reverted back to a 6-0 defence now. Anything else, maybe because uh, Gorbok is off and uh, Afli Tulin has come on for him and uh, throw quickly taken by the French, and that's what they're very good at. And, uh, Karabatic, a little smile there. Karabatic has been given a, a breather in the second half. Excellent, accurate pass. Well, the party started here for the French fans, but uh, bad news for Russia. Igor Pulo, hopefully just a bit of a cramp. But no, it's not going to be a cramp at all. He's uh, twisted it as he went round. And he 
injuries coming off, and that could be bad news for Russia. They certainly can't afford any further injuries. They've got a bad enough problem already with Chipurin Rasvodsev being out. And uh, Timur Dibirov, the uh, superb left winger for Russia, who declared himself unavailable. He wanted to concentrate on his club. Decision which uh, has not been met particularly well in Russia. In fact, the women's coach, Trefilov, who's back with the women's team after having retired, called him a traitor for his decision. It's gone out for a throw in to Russia. It's maybe pushing it a little too far, but uh, it is unfortunate for the Russians. But. Uh, they certainly can't afford to lose uh, Igropulo. Aslanian has come in in his place, number 69 at the right back position. There's uh, Afri Tulin, one of the new players with just three internationals to his name, the uh, number 52. Aslanian, though, fairly experienced, 70 caps. Russians are still pushing very deep as uh, France uh, have brought on Acombre, number 18. Normally a left back, but he uh, seems to be played as a playmaker for the moment. Although Gribi now does move into the central position. Cambrai, little hand off. Gribi, oh, good opportunity, but he shot straight down the middle. It was a poor finish. Russians are coming back fast now. Good play and first goal of the game for Inal Aflitulin, the 25 year old from Moto Zaporozhye in the Ukraine. Plays there with Skopinsev. Only three internationals and five goals to his name before coming here. So, a Cambrai, who plays for Montpellier. Ah! Gets his first. The, the goalkeeper, a bit of a spectator on that one. Still, that 10 goal lead persists. So, there is uh, Zitnikov. Aslanian cuts it. Oh, big gap, but he should have driven in rather than shoot from all that way out. Not being used in uh, defense, Aslanian. Substitute with Pushkin at the moment, Aslanian. So, Akambre, Grebi. He's got in close now, he'll have a go, and that's defending inside the area. Surprise look by Evdokimov, but uh, the penalty is given. Grebi sidesteps, and uh, the moment you're defending inside the area, you're in trouble. And uh, Pushkin, unfortunately, should have, uh, when he went out, stopped him on the drive. So, a change of uh, penalty taker. It's Jolie. Ah! Up the corner post and it goes out. So no luck for the 28-year-old uh, uh, winger from Dunkerque. Jolie who played for uh, Valladolid for a couple of years, very successfully. Well, a very thoughtful-looking Oleg Kulichov. Must be a bit disappointed that uh, the options just on there. France have defended well, though, in an attack. They have been quite ruthless. And it has been difficult for his young charges here, even with the likes of Igropulo and uh, Atman and Gorbok trying to pull them along. But it's all about building, he said so before. That's nice though. Excellent shot by the 27-year-old. Aslanian. Slams the ball away. Understanding on that occasion between the winger and the back player on Rubia. That's taken very high by uh, Sergei Kudinov. And it's a free throw. And, uh, they just uh, stop play briefly to uh, mop the floor. So uh, it's all going rather well for Narcisse and his teammates. France on a 74% success rate with their shooting. Russia 58%. Actually, I've seen worse in some games by teams that have won it. But uh, today, it's not enough, I'm afraid. The Russian fans still waving the flags, but uh, 
They won't be walking away with the points today. But maybe France wasn't the team that they thought they could beat. Even uh, lessened by injury. Rebi, ah, too much room. Fourth goal from five shots for the 22-year-old. Uh, but also uh, Levchin moving awkwardly to his left, the 39-year-old keeper. Bogdanov may be thinking, well, give me another shot, but uh, it looks a lot easier, I can tell you, when you're sitting in the stands than it does when you're facing a shot at uh, 100 kilometers an hour or so into the line, oh, pull back uh, Pushkin. 26-year-old uh, Neva, St. Petersburg, uh, he was caught by uh, Acambre. Let's have a quick look and see. Well, actually, it looked like a high elbow more than anything else. So uh, France will be short-handed. They'll get back to full strength again with uh, just about 23 seconds remaining in the game only. But uh, the points are in the bag for France. It's been a uh, relatively uh, comfortable start for the French team. Who have been able to uh, turn the bench a bit here today and still stay on top. Impressive performance by Grebi, but uh, Nyoka stands out as a uh, player of the match for me with the French team. And that's a nice goal, though, by Pushkin. Managed to get away from Fernandez and beats Dumoulin. Start. Definitely looks very chilled as he goes to speak to Didier Dinard on the bench. So to say, well, you're in charge of defence. What went wrong there then? On Rubia comes out to help as uh, Grebi is now being uh, individually marked. Number 15 at the bottom of the picture. They're pushing up on both the back players, it seems. Fernandez. Moving all over the place. Fernandez is uh, right hand that plays left back or centre, but happy to play it right back as well. Passive play being worn, so Fernandez takes the shot and it goes out to the back for a goalkeeper throw in by left chin. Oh, lovely little dummy to one side by Aslanian and then he drives through. And uh, this time Monesta not looking so happy. So we're inside the last minute. France leading uh, very comfortably here. 35-27. The Russians all credit to them, though. Despite being outgunned, they've uh, just kept their heads down and battled on. And have posted a very respectable score. Did well to uh, keep that in play and away from his legs as much as anything else on Rubia. France are now back to full strength. Too many steps. Is it well? No, they're actually saying it's for the line player holding. Full called against Anic. Into the wing. That's good. Big space. Well, a late flurry here by the Russians. Three goals without reply. But that will be it. The final buzzer goes, and France win their opening match of Euro 2014 against Russia by 35 goals to 28. They never looked in trouble, Ernest does, man. And were able to turn the bench quite heavily in the second half, with everyone getting on court. The Russians, though, battled away for their 28 goals. But a very thoughtful Kulechov. Russia will play Serbia on Wednesday, while France will be up against Poland in their next games. Well, the French fans are happy. A comfortable start then for the French side. And we still have the uh, best player award. Maybe uh, Igro Pulon on one hand, or maybe Gorbok for the Russians.
Just a little huddle for the uh, French team who finished off in the end with a 73% success rate on their shooting. And the Russians 61%. Well, it is. It could only be Njokas who's won the Player of the Match award in his first major competition. 27-year-old from Chambéry, scoring nine goals from 12 shots. And he looks cool as anything as he takes his uh, award from Helga Magnus of the uh, European Handball Federation. And uh, what a great future he has with the team. Well, they've given the award to Dmitry Kovalev for scoring six goals, but four of them were penalties. He did work hard in defence, but... Uh, well, I'll let you decide if... Uh, that's what you would have given. I might have had a different opinion. But there you go, makes no odds. At the end, to the result of the game, France have the two points and uh, finish up today top of Group C after their first round of matches. Yes, you've won. You can start smiling again. And then Jokas heads off with his award. Uh, Batic says, super, well done. Narcisse, uh, the frown was etched on his face at all times, it seems. A serious looking player. Uh, the goalkeepers, well, good performance by Dumoulin, but the Russians, I'm afraid, struggled a bit. Well, let's have a look at the statistics uh, as they stand. So France tonight, top of the group with two points on goal difference, plus seven ahead of Serbia on plus one. Poland and Russia have yet to get off the mark. And uh, France certainly looking very impressive despite all the injury problems that they faced. And uh, they may not see themselves as favourites, but others may beg to differ with them. So 73% success rate on their shooting for France, 55 they're showing here for Russia on the attack, 64% of the French attacks were successful. Three fast breaks for Russia, but six for France, and the turnovers, look at that, 14 for Russia, they really struggled there. Kovalev, the best of the scorers for Russia with six, but Njokas, man of the match for France, with nine goals, hugely impressive, ahead of Gigou with seven. Uh, this is how the uh, match went and uh, again the Russians just struggled early on and the French just uh, settled in and turned the bench and there were a few spells when the Russians struggled to score but otherwise it level pegged after that for France well a nice spread of goals a lot down the middle six fast breaks three penalties and uh, three wing shots going in as well for France uh, that's looking all fairly healthy for the Russians. Well, the left and right back positions fairly quiet. Right wing, not a great deal there, I'm afraid. Despite Kovalev's award, three fast breaks and six penalties in the game. So that's it then, France, top of the group tonight after that win. As we see the ratios here, hope you've enjoyed the games. Thanks very much indeed for watching. And until next time, from me, Paul Bray, a very good evening to you.